this is class number seven of seven uh, in this seven-week series on new heavens and new earth. And I think it's really been good, hasn't it? Yeah. And uh, we've been, received a lot. And tonight we're going to be receiving some more. Following uh, our class tonight, we're going to uh, shut the camera off and take the test. And uh, that test will be available online at rickkindle.org. Click the Destiny Group button. Tomorrow it will be online. I didn't want you to cheat and have it too early. Not that any of you would cheat. I have to leave early tomorrow. Yeah, do you? Yeah. Uh, okay, lock the door. <laughs> lock the door. <laughs> He's kidding. <laughs> so we'll have the test uh, after our lesson tonight. And this is just, you know, really the test is just to see, honestly, um, how well we presented the message because we, we need to know what people retain. It's not, you know in the teaching or even in the test, it's in retaining so that we can use it later. Amen. Amen. Hey there. Hello. Hi. So let's get started. Uh, and I think we're getting some folks here online. And again, invite, share, come join us. Tonight, in week number seven of seven weeks, in this class, A New and Living Way, <coughs> I want to share uh, specifically on, I'm sorry, it's a new heavens and new earth. <laughs> That's the course the series. Yeah. But tonight I want to speak on, share on, a new sorry, and living new new way. Sorry, That's the echo, series. echo. A new and living way. Mm -hmm. And just coming here, uh, driving uh, even though we hit all the stoplights. <laughs> um, God downloaded, hey there, God downloaded uh, something. So I want you to write this in your notes because it's not on your sheets. And some of you that don't have a sheet, to uh, you can download it at rekindle.org, but this isn't on that sheet either, so take notes. This is something God gave me concerning a new and living way. And again, our course series, uh, The New Heavens and New Earth. So what does a new and living way have to do with a new heavens and a new earth? Well, as we've said, we're already seeing the new heavens and new earth activated. It's in process. It hasn't fully culminated yet. But how we know it's in process is that he has already opened to us a new and living way. And this is what God downloaded to me, and I want you to write in your notes. Our thoughts become our ways. Mm. Mm. Our thoughts become our ways. Write that down out there in Facebook as well. Our, your thoughts become your ways. So our thoughts are really a frequency. Our thoughts are a frequency that become our ways or a wave. Like a sound wave. Your thoughts or the frequency of those thoughts become your ways or your waves. So based on the frequency of our thoughts, now don't miss this, based on the frequency of our thoughts, it will become our ways or like sound waves. This is why if people are stuck in religion, they're on the wrong frequency. They can even love God. But their frequency says something that is producing their way. So, before you know it, if we listen to the TV too much, come on somebody, mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. if we listen too much to what the noise is out here, and let that become our thoughts, it tries to change our frequency. This is why the enemy is called the prince of the power of the air. 
because he wants to change our frequency in our thoughts to become our ways. So the world out here ignorantly are saying it's a whole new normal. It's a whole new deal out here. But that's the blind leading the blind. When you're on the frequency of God's word, a kingdom frequency, and that becomes your thoughts, it's higher than the thoughts in a corrupted system. So this is why he said, I should have put the scripture, but he says in the Old Testament, he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, says the Lord. Therefore, forsake your thoughts. Mm. Forsake that old frequency. Therefore, you'll be able to forsake your ways or the sound waves that you pay attention to or how you walk. So, isn't that interesting? Wow. Yes, it is. So, our thoughts are a frequency and we have to be set to kingdom, yes. uh, kingdom frequency in our thoughts. And that's why we have to renew our minds daily. Oh my gosh. Yes. Because God says, I said I would give you life and give it to you more abundantly. And some people would say, so this is living? Mm -hmm. What, you're giving me more, me more abundance of this? Mm -hmm. God says, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. No. I'm giving you life abundant on a different frequency. Amen. Yes, amen. It's a new and living way. So that you actually live a life that flesh and blood or corrupted thinking cannot comprehend. Amen. That's right. They don't understand how you can do what you do. They're not on that frequency. They're not on that frequency. Yes. Now, this is what else you can maybe write somehow. Prophecy is on that frequency. Write that down. Prophecy is on that frequency. The kingdom frequency. God's frequency. His thoughts. So prophecy operates in that frequency. Now you don't have to be a prophet no. and in the office of a prophet. But I believe all of us should live prophetic lifestyles. Yes. Amen? Amen. Yes. Because your thoughts become your ways. So prophecy, oh, okay. prophecy isn't telling you how things are. Mm -hmm. right. So prophecy is not your, your way first. Prophecy is your thoughts first. Or the frequency what God is revealing to you that will become your way. Mm -hmm. So you keep telling people, wow, God is up to something big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they look around you and say, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything different. Mm -hmm. And you have to say to them, you're just on the wrong frequency. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm in a new and living way yes. so my thoughts my frequency will become my way or my waves and this is what we carry with us and this is what we want to start with in the new and living way and that's just something god downloaded in the car coming here and i had to share it wow. that's good. so guard your heart with diligence mm -hmm. your heart is the heart of your thinking Amen? Amen. For out of it flow the issues of life. Right. Guard it from being changed or tuned to another station mm. or another frequency. Mm -hmm. To where before you know it, you think, hey, and again, we pray for those who who have faced sickness. Amen? We mm -hmm. pray for those who have been through traumas. We yeah. pray for those. We're not saying anything about that because... Thank God he is there 
and he's the great physician. Amen? Amen. But we need to be on the frequency that says, I don't necessarily have to be thinking about, am I going to get sick? That's right. I don't have to be on the frequency of saying, what if my finances don't hold out? What if I need to do this because of that? That's the wrong frequency. We are, we have, oh, amen. We have been authorized to live a little bit higher. Yes. On a different frequency. To where I thank God for health every day. And if I faced anything, he would be my physician. Amen. So I'm not saying anything like, you know, we're looking down our nose at anything. But what I'm saying is, have a healthy mindset. Not a mindset, a renewed mind. And yes. I, I was going to say, and, and, and it's always been that way. Yeah. The frequency has always been there. And I think crisis and things that we go through, like what we're going through as a nation, as the world, is just bringing out the, the, what we haven't seen before. Yeah. And those frequencies and those dimensions, which have always been there for us to recognize and to live there. Yeah. And now we see it more clear. Why? Yeah. Because there is crisis. Because the world is telling us, you know, 2020 is the world. Yeah. Uh, you remember this and that and that. No, I'm not going to remember that. I'm going to remember what God did. Yeah. And the frequency and, that and here's, I got. And here's the thing that's so good, honey, because your purpose has not been put on hold. Mm. Our purpose is never put on hold. Mm. We don't suddenly have to take a detour because of challenges. In fact, your purpose was made for that, mm. to barrel through it. Come on, somebody. Yeah. But you got to stay on the frequency that says, I know God. I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against any day. Mm. Amen. Amen. So he will be your fortress. He will be your strength. He will be that that gets you through from the conflict to the conquest. So this is what I want to start off with, a new and living way. So now let's go to... The study sheet. A New and Living Way, Hebrews chapter 10. I want to read a few scriptures here. And you know, isn't that nice, honey, how John got his wife coffee? I just, I, I really, I just admire that. I just, I just think that's so sweet. That is so sweet. Anyway, what? Oh, me? Oh, well. <laughs> oh, oh, looky there. Oh, that's Why? so nice. Somebody's being nice for you. For me. He, he, he's the little one. I'm the other one. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. He's the little one in the relationship. Uh, anywho. So let's get going. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 through 20. Just having fun, guys. This is the covenant I will make with them in those days. Remember, we're talking about a new and living way. This is the what? Covenant. I will make with them in those days. In other words, covenant means absolute. Yes. Saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts. And in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. What's that? He forgets, it. he forgets it. Now, where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. In other words, let's move on. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus. Thank From you. Holly. Thank you, Holly, and thank you, honey. All right. Hallelujah. Holly, honey. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now look at this. Having therefore, brethren, boldness. What kind of? Boldness. What do we have? Boldness. Boldness. Mm -hmm. To enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way. Not the old way. But the new and living way. Which he hath consecrated for us. Through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, literally, 
Now, we no longer have to go into the Holy of Holies, but the Holy of Holies has come into us. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, that's a hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> they pierced his flesh. And blood and water came out. And for us, the kingdom came in. The veil was rent from the top to the bottom. So we could come in boldly to a new and living way. Wow. So we know new is the Greek word kinos, the original blueprint, unprecedented, day revealed. So new is that, and living is zeo. Living is zeo. Life is zoe. Living is zeo, meaning lifestyle. Effervescent. Activated according to design or DNA. So now I have come into my original design. I have come into the lifestyle God always purposed me to have before I was born. And also the lifestyle he purposed for me to have before Adam fell. Wow. Mm -hmm. So now I'm on a new frequency. My thoughts have to be renewed to that frequency or tuned into that frequency every day by the Spirit. Amen. So we have to see that God has transitioned us into a place, can I be honest with you, that I feel like we've barely tapped. We've barely tapped it because I'm going to tell you, you may think you've emptied out all the religion, no. but we're all still in the process of emptying out what was never God, what was pharisaical, what was, what was uh, regulations and all those things to begin to understand or comprehend the frequency. And yes. I think we should be really patient with ourselves and patient with each other because we're on different levels and and, and and believe and trust that God will show us those places mm -hmm. because sometimes we can't see them. Yeah. But the, he will reveal those at the right time. Yeah. yeah. And when we say religion, we're not just going across the board talking bad about all right. That's things right. that are called Christian. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we're more than just Christ followers. We're kingdom citizens. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's because we follow Christ. He's our king. Amen. Yes. But but we're talking about religion that became bondage, that became uh, either a, a camping at where things were or men trying to reach God and do whatever they needed to do and all those traditional things mm -hmm. that were not uh, God moving us forward in his kingdom. So I'm in a new and living way. Yes. Now I'm going to address the little box in the middle of your page there in just a little bit. But I want to start with number one. We've been redeemed. Mm -hmm. yes. We've been redeemed. redeemed. I've been adopted, but I'm not a stepson. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'm not a stepson. No. Mm -hmm. You're not a stepson. You're not a stepdaughter. Mm -hmm. But we literally have been redeemed to our original bloodline as sons of God. A stepson was adopted with money. We've been adopted with blood. Amen. Amen. Not, and if you're a stepson out there or a stepdaughter in the natural world, we're not talking about you. <laughs> and by the way, if you know the Lord, he doesn't consider you a stepson to him. You're his son. You're his daughter. Because you were God's in the first place. So redeem means he bought you back. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He paid for it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> True. Yeah. So, 
We were made in his image. Yes, sir. None of us were, were bad trying to get good. We were good that bad came into the scene through Adam's fall. And now we're being returned to our good. Or to our blueprint as i always say that's that's the basis where religion takes off in another direction mm. because if you are if we, we believe that we were we're bad mm -hmm. and we were born bad we were bad we were just being bad and now we're going to be good then we have the premise of foundation wrong. and it's the wrong frequency and, isn't it and we would always be trying to get back to salvation because we're going to be saved from that bad person we can never get rid of yeah so and that's again that's the thoughts that need to be redeemed. So we've been redeemed. I think it's first Peter. I didn't put one or two, but I think it's first Peter one eighteen nineteen 19 there on your sheet. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold <laughs> from your vain conversations received by the traditions of your fathers. But with the precious blood of Christ, as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Wow. Meaning, I'm back in the bloodline. You and I have royal blood. Wow. I'm not a step anything. I'm just in. <laughs> Amen. So atonement, see the difference between atonement and redemption. I hear people sometimes talk about, I've been atoned, thank you, Jesus. Okay, but atonement is the Hebrew word kapar. Cover. means to cover over, to pacify, to reconcile, and be merciful. Mm -hmm. That's That was the Old Testament. That was the Old Covenant. Yeah, but in the New Covenant, we've been redeemed. Yeah. That is exgorazo. Mm -hmm. To restore. Mm -hmm. To purchase back. <laughs> to liberate. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah. To have freedom by ransom. <laughs> ransom paid. Yes. I'm not yeah. set free. I'm made free. Yeah. Huh. If I was just set free, I could go back into the bondage again. But I'm made free because now I'm addressing my new DNA. Yeah. Amen? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. We have been authorized. What officially is official. The anointing Jesus carried, we carry that anointing. Wow, 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 wow. So Galatians 4, 5 says, to redeem. Everybody say redeem. redeem. I just love that word. <laughs> redeem them that were under the law. That. What was that? Well, as long as they don't come crashing through the wall, we're okay. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive what? The adoption, the adoption of sons. Mm. Wow. I'm a son of the Most High God. Mm. But he says all creation in Romans 8, all creation is waiting for us to manifest. Yeah. Right. Meaning, I don't think we've tapped into it fully yet. Mm. You, you, you know what? Every time I move to a new level, it scares me. Yeah. I'm just being honest. Yeah. Because I begin to realize how much greater God is yeah. in me. And how much now I'm more accountable to walk in that frequency. Yeah. I can't lower my thoughts. Yeah. I have to stay. It says, as you become minded, walk by that rule. You, you've in that frequency. Wow. I know I'm all over the place, but I'm excited. So let's go to look at this. It says to redeem deem them that were what? The under the law. You ought to underline the word under. Mm -hmm. Under the law. So therefore, uh, we have people saying, thank God there is no more law. Yes, thank God I'm not under the law. Now I'm free to do whatever I want. I'm free as a bird. We're free. We are free. But we're under grace. Yes. Yes. And grace is a law. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, let's look at it. Mm. 
And now go to the little box in the middle. I think we can visit the little box in the middle. Okay. I, I tried to just show this as simply as possible. As you see in the on the left, the Old Testament mm -hmm. law was regulation, works, judgment, and atonement mm -hmm. due to the first fall time. of the first Adam. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. In the middle there, you see the law. The law is precepts, yes. statutes, Adam. and principles. Mm -hmm. Does anybody still need principles? Mm -hmm. yeah. I said, does anybody still need principles? Yes. Then I guess there must, still must be a need for the law. But we're not under it. So now in the New Testament, see there on the right, the New Testament law is about empowering, about enforcing, about justification. It's about redemption through the second Adam, Jesus Christ. First Adam fell, second Adam rose again. Now, some people say, no, Dr. Rick, call him the last Adam. The problem with that is, is we're the first fruits. Yeah. He's the first fruits of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's not the last. No. Yeah. We are. Because <laughs> we're also in the mix. Yes, we are. I'm a redeemed Adam. Yes. Oh, let's just let, think about it. Wow. <laughs> so now I'm no longer under the law. But the law is in me. No longer trying to work toward it. But now by the spirit of God, it has been made alive so I can enforce it. Yep, through the hallway, see there on your sheet, mm -hmm. through the hallway of grace. Yes. We go from mercy and I still need mercy every now and then. How about you? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't live in mercy. But now, through the hallway of grace, I come to righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. So now, the law is no longer a regulation that I can't come up to. But now, the law is a rule that is empowering me to live righteous through grace. I see the wheels turning. <laughs> uh, we might still have to have a round table even though we got a test. But hang in here with me. We got to be on a whole new frequency. Can we get an amen on that? Amen. So now because I've been redeemed, go down to point two, I am now renewed. I am affirmed no longer as a trespasser under the law, <laughs> but an enforcer empowered by it. <laughs> And I thought of it this way because I think in pictures because I I just do. <laughs> I'm artistic, I guess. But I one day I said, God, explain this to me so I can see it better and explain it better. <clears throat> he said, you used to be the con on the other side of the bars. But now you're the officer enforcing the law on this side. So you're not under the law. You're enforcing my principles mm -hmm. by living my law. That's right. And it's the same law. Mm. Same law. Yeah. So sometimes uh, we've made grace a little sloppy yeah. because it, it gave people license. Mm. But it was not a license given by God mm. because we still have to live according to his constitution. And, and may I say something to Amen. just to bring, bring clarification as to what the law is, because the law God gave His own voice and with His own finger, and but a lot of people think of the law as the Old Testament, mm -hmm. the whole the the, the way our Bible is set up. Mm -hmm. In other words, we you know we, we the Old Testament is it's all law. It, it, the 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 fact is that the law is a law, is a law, is a law. It's the same one ever, forever, and ever, and it's never going to pass away. But the punishment of, this, of the law is what was our new covenant, because in the old covenant, the punishment was death or atonement. So in the, in the, and in the new 
covenant. So a lot of people, and a lot of people think that the old is only the Old Testament. And the Old Testament has the Psalms and has the prophets and has all the, that's not a part of the old covenant. Yeah. So uh, the Bible, you know, they just did it that way. I don't know why they divided it that way, but I understand in some ways. But the fact is, is that the same law and it's never changed. And we need to realize that what changed about the law, it was transformed by Jesus. Yes. Yeah. And now he has written it in our hearts. So it's not, it's not, it's not passed away. Yeah. It's still the same. So what we, we, we should say the new covenant or the old covenant. Yeah. Not the New Testament or the, or the, you know, well, the, the way the, the Bible is yeah. laid out. And it's like John 8 of how the woman was persecuted of um, having an affair with another man. And the people, the first tried to test Jesus saying, mm -hmm. what are you going to do? He said, all right, any of you without sin, go ahead and cast the first stone. Yeah. He changed, as you said, the punishment, the consequences yeah. of the law of what you should have this yeah. you should have gotten in the old testament. He gave an yeah. illustration. He gave, right. And because he wrote that. there yeah. there is there is definitions of the law like the Pentateuch, there's the there's the definition of the regulations, there's there's the definitions of of the feast and so forth. And so we know that those were what was needed because mm -hmm. the law was a tutor. It was a tutor to show right. men how drastically lost they were. Mm -hmm. But now Jesus, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So now he brought a, a transformative yeah, yeah. aspect to bringing the law into now a principle of life. Mm -hmm. So this is why we see. Yeah, he fulfilled it. And he, and this is, this is what we mean by fulfilling is that, well, let's, let's read on. Romans 8, 2. For the law, mm -hmm. oh, there's a law, of the spirit of life, where? Mm -hmm. In Christ Jesus right. has made me free. <laughs> yes, sir. From the law of sin and death. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, who fulfilled the law. Law is the Greek word nomos, meaning precept, principle, rule. Romans 6, 14, for sin shall not have dominion over ye, uh -huh. over you, for ye are not under the law. Right. Positionally, mm -hmm. unable to obtain it. So I'm not under the law any longer. Right. My position has changed. I'm now made to sit together in heavenly places Amen. of authorization to uphold the constitution the of the kingdom. <laughs> the same law. I will write my laws in their heart, mm -hmm. in the fleshly tables of their heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm no longer under the law, but I'm under grace. Grace, there's the Greek word charis, where we get the word charisma. Right. Right. But it means to be empowered. Empowered with the law of the spirit of life. <laughs> amen. Oh, I hope we can grab this. Thank you, Jesus. It's a new and living way. Yes, amen. Why aren't we just going ahead and living it already? Amen. Well, you know, because of this and that. No more this and that. I want to get on with living again. How about you? Yeah, a whole new level. Amen. amen. So Romans 3.31. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. No. Uh, Charlton Heston, God forbid. <laughs> Yea, we what? Establish, Establish the law. We do. We're officers. But it's, we're in a different place, and it's in a different place. I'm no longer working works to try to obtain it. Mm -hmm. I'm That's now right. living by that grace that causes me to be empowered to enforce it. That's the anointing that comes Amen. through you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> it changed our frequency too. You know, because it says, it says, and I should know the scripture. I think in the book of Psalms, the law of the Lord is perfect. It's perfect. Doesn't need anything. Converting the frequency, but we couldn't get it. 
because it was outside of us. But now it came in us through Jesus, ripping the veil. So now we could come in, the Holy of Holies come into us. But I can understand why religion went from the law rigid to the law grace. Let's do everything we want. You know, you're in grace. We can, you know, it doesn't matter. It does. It does matter. It has consequences. It might not have punishment, like, like it was, but it has consequences. He never removed that part. But they so, call it they call it greasy grace and sloppy agape. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's yeah. Yeah, so I, both I was religion. in the charismatic. It's movement. both a religion. I've been in Pentecostal. Hey, I've been in all of them. I know all the lingo. We've been from the beginning. James chapter 1, verse 25. I'm sorry, honey, were you? Did I? No, no, okay. no, not time I'm done. I just had a witty thought, so I had to give it. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so James 1, 25. You know what? I'm excited tonight. You know what? <laughs> I so much want to see ambassadors come up yes. to their level of living. Yes, amen. You know, uh, uh, speaking life and speaking joy and speaking hope and speaking destiny and speaking purpose. And, and begin to, to lay aside the weights that would easily beset us and get back to running the race that is set before us. The best is yet to come. So I'm a little bit excited. I found myself preaching to myself at home today. <laughs> James yeah. one twenty five. But whoso, oops, look at this. Whoso looketh into what? The perfect, perfect law. law. The perfect law of liberty. <laughs> and Continue. stays in that frequency. Yeah. Thank you. Continue with therein. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer mm -hmm. of the work this man shall be blessed in his deed. Isn't that awesome? Our frequency becomes our ways. Our popcorn's doing work on somebody. You good? Okay. You want some water? So, so number three. Since we've been redeemed, we've been renewed, ladies and gentlemen, we have been returned <laughs> to our God-ordained yes. purpose. Returned and activated to abundant life, overflowing, bursting into all the world. Jesus, when he said, I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly, he didn't mean more of this life that you're living in the dumps. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Get out of the dumps. I got life that's above that. Yes. That's double blessing. Amen. Amen. And it is it is a snapshot whenever whenever because this is why I said prophecy lives in the frequency of a new and living way. Because prophecy will always reveal it before it manifests. Yes. Am I right? Yes. yes. So we we don't get a prophecy about the way things are right now. Prophecy usually will take you way ahead of it. Yes. And look like it has nothing to do with it. But that's why we miss the frequency sometimes. Because goes, God, I'm trying to figure out what about this here that I'm dealing with. And God says, I've already taken care of that. I want to show you what's after that so you can go beyond it. So prophecy isn't first the way. Prophecy is first the thought, if you can put it that way. I'm slobbering all over myself. <laughs> Keep it together, Dr. Rick. Yeah, I'm out of coffee. <laughs> this might require two cups. <laughs> this is good coffee, by the way. What was I saying? It was <laughs> looking ahead. Thank you. Prophesying. Prophecy isn't first the way. Prophecy is first the thought, if you can put it the way, the frequency that will get you to the way. And become the sound wave that gets you there. So, so this is why it's important that we understand that it's vital for us to, yes, be aware, know what's going on, all these kind of things. But separate yourself from all that junk. And all they're saying you're going to have to do and not do and whatever. And say, God, what are you saying? 
because I want my thoughts to be your thoughts and my ways to be your ways. Mm -hmm. So I need to live in a prophetic mind. And that doesn't mean always, you know, oh, I want to see what's going to happen. And, oh, I'm going to, and get all flaky. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it just means that we're constantly living above so we can see past and stay there. Well, Dr. Rick in the Valley, he restores my soul. I know that's a great song, but it's <laughs> it's not where we belong. No. <laughs> he, if you get down there, yeah, he'll restore your soul and he'll say, get back up to the mountain. Mm -hmm. Because we need to stay in our heavenly places, our heavenly positions. So, number three. Thank you, honey. Hey, she has her ways, too, to get me to do things. We've been returned. Activated to abundant life. Is anybody ready to go to that level? Mm -hmm. yeah. A new level of that? Yeah. Uh, you think you've seen something? We ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah, amen. The best is yet to come. I'm telling you, don't wait for a church service. No. It could hit you in the car. Mm. Come on, somebody. Yeah. It could be in the middle of something you're doing in the job. But suddenly it'll come to you like a snapshot and you say, whoa, it's a frequency. We're tuning in. <laughs> come on, somebody. Yeah. I'm going to hold on to that. Because, God, you got something going on, and I want to know what it is. I'm going to lay aside every weight and everything that's trying to distract me. I need to tune in. I almost feel like I could weep, not because I'm hyper with a coffee, but because this is so deep in my spirit. Praying for people, myself as well. I'm not, I haven't arrived, but I'm saying praying that we will get this, that there is a new level for you right yes, now. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yes. I mean, new business ventures, new exciting yes. destinies, things, innovations. Mm -hmm. and, and we've got to lay aside some stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and you say, yeah, but I can't lay aside what I'm going through. You just don't know what I'm going through. We're all facing something. Yes. <laughs> Family, sometimes, whatever. Mm -hmm. But we have to say, God... Your frequency is too much of a treasure for me Amen. to put on hold. If you're speaking, I'm there. Amen. Amen. I'm there. Plus, if we want the best for the family, for yeah. whatever is going on. Yeah. Then the only way you're going to be a help is to get on the frequency. That's it. Yeah. So tune in. How many of you believe he's saying something to you? Yeah. Not just he's Dr. Rick. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He's saying, hey, I'm trying to get your attention. Yeah. Come on, lay that, lay that thing aside. It's time to tune in. You say, I don't know how. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Just go before him and let him do the work. Amen. He's going to be glad to see you. <laughs> James 125. But whoso looketh into that perfect law. We read that one. Point B. So are we tapping into that new and living way? Or are we still allowing the corruption in the world to rule us? John 14, uh, John 4, 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give shall be in him and her a well of water springing up into everlasting living way. So now I, this is the question that I felt the Lord put in my heart to, to ask you. You don't have to answer out loud. And also I want to preface this by saying, please don't condemn yourself because we all go through things. But if you're thirsty, something has crept in and tried to satisfy your thirst. It may even be a good thing, but it's not a God thing. It may be a way you're handling it it may be a way of trying to get through it. It might be a survival technique or whatever. It might be something good or bad. But God says, I won't allow it. Because if you drink of the water I give you, you don't thirst. Come on, somebody. But you keep the well coming. Yeah, we may want more of that water, but not because they're thirsty. Amen? 
And if we're getting dry, we don't need to condemn ourselves. We just need to say, oh my gosh, I guess I need to tap back into that well again because I've let something try to substitute. Come on, are you all with me? I've let something try to substitute uh, quenching my thirst to try to help me get through this stuff. And God says, I'm a jealous God. I don't allow anybody else or anything else to satisfy that thirst. Get back on point. Dig deep into the well. Come on, somebody. You still love me and everything? Okay. So, this is what I want to wrap this up with. Whosoever drinks of the water I give will have everlasting life springing up. So, we've been given power of attorney. I thought I'd hear a shout or something. Amen. That's what the law does for us now. Mm -hmm. I, I just love it that uh, the apostle's name is Chris Attorney. <laughs> Chris Attorney. They don't know who they're dealing with, do they? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. My middle Power name is Attorney. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How many of you believe you have power of attorney? Yeah. Yeah. Given yeah. authorized by God. Oh, yes. Then why don't we use it? Yeah. Well, what does that give me? Promise, rights, mm -hmm. position, representation, portion, royalty, royalty. property, Real, real estate. estate, possessions, restoration. Amen. What the enemy took, he has to pay back seven times. Amen. Why don't we amen. use that power of attorney? Yes, amen. Well, I tried it and it didn't work. You tried it. Yes. You don't just try it. No. You, you simply it. stand on it until it happens. Right. Oh, come on, somebody. We need to get, you know, we've got more backbone than we realize we have. Yes. Amen. Exercise, your power. Exercise it. Exercise your yeah. You may have power of attorney, but you've got to exercise it. That means you begin to stand. Having done all to stand, you stand. You keep declaring until it manifests. But when God says, be quiet, you're quiet. When he says, speak, you speak. Because the attorney is representing the king. And the, we, you know, I, I hope this will come out okay, but... I love it when people say, um, has, uh, I decree, I decree uh, a thing. But in and of ourselves, we can't decree what the king hasn't decreed. If he's decreed it, we're authorized to decree. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. We can't just decree what we want. A decree is a serious thing. It's the power of attorney to do what the king says to do. Yeah. Amen. So this new and living way causes me to want to sit up straight mm -hmm. and say, oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. um, I have <laughs> been authorized as an mm -hmm. official of the law of life. So I need to begin to ask God, show me now how you've purposed me and destined me to begin to impact the world. And let's get back to it. Because I'm telling you what, all of us in some way or another, including me, I've been tempted, have been kind of like, oh, well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we almost tempted to sing that old song, nobody knows <laughs> the trouble I see. <laughs> but you know, Paul and Silas didn't sing that song in jail. Yeah. They sang a hymn like, hey, hallelujah. We're getting out. <laughs> yeah, we're getting out. Hallelujah. And the walls shook and the warden came in ready to serve him breakfast. Whatever you need, I'm here for you. And I think we need to begin to exercise that. Okay, well, we're going to have a round table in the test or in that order, something like that. We're going to go back and read all of your comments. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, you know, I, uh, I felt just a real... Um, anointing of declaration tonight uh, on me to share what I felt God wanted me to share. So I hope you'll see past just the vessel and just hear God, that he's trying to wake us up, not wake us up, get us up. 
We don't need another awakening as much as we need an arising and get back into a new and living way. It's our right. Amen. And as we always say, what do we say? To, to the, the king. king.